Welcome back to the Tagus McGinnis Elder Care Law Hour. I'm attorney Chris Johnson. Today we're learning about different therapies for dementia and other related diseases. And I'm Barbara McGinnis. In this episode, we're talking, or particularly in this segment of this episode, we're going to be talking about music therapy. We all know that music is good for the soul. We live in Music City, Tennessee. But Dr. Noel Gooden is going to talk to us about how music therapy particularly helps those with neurological disease and memory impairment. Good morning, Dr. Gooden. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about music therapy. What is it and who can benefit? Yeah, so music therapy is a clinical and evidence-based use of music intervention in order to help someone with individualized treatment goals. So a lot of people think it might just be playing an instrument or learning a song, but it's yeah. a lot more than that. Um, a lot of also people think maybe that it's just for people who are already musicians, but it it's for anyone. You don't have to have already studied music or known music in order to benefit from music therapy. And so with the neurologic uh, music therapy, talking about neurological disorders and Alzheimer's, how yeah. does that work? How, does it, how do they get the benefits from it? Yeah, so neurologic music therapy is a subspecialty of the greater music therapy, and it specifically looks at clinical standardized treatments that are geared towards sensory motor um, issues, language and speech issues, physical motor mobility issues, and cognitive executive function issues. So for that reason, it's really set up to specifically address a lot of the neurological conditions that people you know, may struggle with at different points in their life. Well, what about, how does it, what about memory impairment and cognition? Yeah, so what we know, music is a very complicated thing. You know, we often think about music as being really easy because we think about singing songs in school and stuff like that. But music is actually, it uses all the parts of the brain in a lot of ways that other things don't. Because if we're playing and singing, we might be moving, moving our faces, moving our bodies. We're also planning and organizing what we're gonna do with the music. We have to make decisions about you know, whether we're gonna play a note or say a word. So it's actually a very complicated neuro um, process that happens when we're engaged in music that also involves our body and because of that it's a tool that we can use to practice certain things that we might need to practice if we're working on neural rehab or neural development or trying to maintain certain neural processes for certain people such as memory or executive function so essentially if we think about if we want to practice building up our muscles, we might do a push-up, and repetition then helps build up the muscles. In the same way, if we want to remember something, we might practice going over it in our mind, and that will help that mm -hmm. neural pathway kind of etch itself more yeah. solidly. So if we want to practice something like executive function, which involves a lot of things like decision-making, planning, organization, Music is a great tool because it involves all of those processes and by engaging in a musical experience, whether it's improvisation or composition or just a performance with other people, we're using all of those tools that we use with executive function, but we're using it in a structured way that'll mm -hmm. let us practice it kind of over and over again across a music therapy session and across time. And fortunately, it's also enjoyable because most people <laughs> like to play music and to play music so we're, with other people. So we're not people. talking about just listening to something. We're talking oh, no. about being really engaged with you you're singing, you're playing an instrument, exactly. you're exactly. writing music, okay. Correct, that's ah. actually a big part of what makes you know, music actually. therapy different than, you know, other modalities like receptive music listening, which still might be helpful in some ways and still may be a part of a music therapy session, mm -hmm. but would have limitations in terms of certain goals. Like if you're working okay. on relearning how to use a limb or relearning speech, just listening to music isn't going to be very helpful. Um, whereas you can use different, um, for instance, the singing part of the brain is different than the speaking part of the brain. So if you have wow, like damage or disease that's affected your speaking part of the brain, you may still be able to access your singing part of the brain. And that's one way that neurologic music therapy helps people 
to relearn to talk, maybe after a stroke or a brain injury. Is that why Mel Till is stuttered, but he could sing beautifully? Exactly. Okay. That's the oh, same wow. concept. Yeah. It's yes, it's it's really intriguing how our brains are wired uh -huh. and what music therapy and neurologic music therapy lets us do is to use our knowledge of how music is wired mm -hmm. in the brain and in some ways to kind of hijack it and mm -hmm. twist it into helping us with neuroplasticity with other goals that we're working on, other non-musical goals. So it sounds like with everything you've been going into that there's some scientific studies and scientific support that yes. lends itself that this really is good for people with these types of neurological impairments. Definitely. So it's a very science-based profession, much like physical therapy, occupational therapy, any of those. Um, some articles that I was just looking over this morning, you know, there's certain articles that do look into executive function specifically and memory, mm -hmm. and those show, you know, improvements with neurologic music therapy. There's also a lot of articles specifically looking at Alzheimer's, um, Parkinson's, you know, populations like this that wow. elder adults might might be thinking about and they can show benefits in mood, decreased anxiety, specifically with some of the late Alzheimer's you can have a lot of trouble with anxiety because mm -hmm. you feel so trapped and isolated. But yeah. One thing that music therapy is really good at is that it balances out our relaxation hormones and our vagal tone, which helps the body relax. It also unleashes certain neurochemicals like dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin, which is sort of the support feel love good. hormone, yep. the feel yeah. good hormone that you might get a parent and a child might get, um, a pet and a pet owner might get. Right. Um, and you can get that when you're engaged in music with other people. So for folks who are feeling kind of isolated and maybe sad and anxious because they're not yeah. able to interact with the world like they'd like to, music therapy can actually be really helpful. It can decrease the amount of medication needed for kind of sedation and relaxation. It can even, because of that vagal tone balance, some of my favorite research that's been coming out has been showing things like decreased heart failure incidents and other, you know, decreased medical problems that result because you are balancing out your relaxation hormones, you're balancing out your autonomic nervous system, okay. and that can actually protect your body from certain medical problems down the road. Um, it Essentially, if you think, you know, stress yeah. and agitating your body can lead to a lot of problems. So if you're managing that and kind of helping to calm down the hormonal mm -hmm. balance of your stress, then it protects you from a lot of things. Um, there's That's even very interesting. immune modu modulation, so your yeah. immune system can improve. Wow, that's um, fascinating. Because yep. of that, which is really cool. <laughs> that's all fascinating. But what's an actual session look like? Yes, so that's a, a really good question, and it honestly depends a lot on who who the person is and what they're looking to do. Uh -huh. So if you're looking to work on your speech this session would probably involve a lot of speaking, face movement, maybe using mm -hmm. instruments that help you strengthen your face and things to help you strengthen your core muscles and your breast support. If you're working on cognition, it may involve more playing music, um, composing music, improvising music, things like that. If you're working on you know, walking, gait, mobility, it may involve rhythm, um, or music with a strong beat or a metronome with a strong beat which what we know is sound helps us initiate movement mm -hmm. so for folks with Parkinson's who have trouble initiating movement sometimes you can use rhythm to kind of help with efficacy of the muscle movements and initiation of the muscle movements which in general can give you a better workout but can also give you a tool that you can use even outside of a session. So if you're trying to cross the street and you feel a little stuck, some uh, NMT or neurologic music therapy Parkinson's folks will carry a little metronome that they can kind of ah. help wow. initiate their movements if they're out and about and feeling a little bit stuck just because are, the rhythm can really help our bodies. Are, are like, these sessions really like one-on-one -on -one sessions or do you do groups? Um, so. Uh, both are options. Mm -hmm. So I with I 
have a lot of individual clients that I see, but I also do groups at some facilities. Um, okay. There's a lot of different music therapists out there. You know, some might work specifically only with a facility. Some might work in a community like I do and do a mix. It's really, again, it's sort of up to the, the facility or the client, the patient, the person, whatever they're looking to do. Groups can add a social element mm -hmm. that can be really helpful, mm -hmm. um, but individual therapy can sometimes also be helpful in other ways because you can really dig dig into what that person wants to work on. Right. Yeah. So what type of training do you need to become a music therapist? Yeah, so it's it, to be a board certified music therapist, you go to a program that's certified to teach music therapy, much like you would as a speech therapist or a physical therapist. Um, the program I went to is typically four to five years of training. You study um, music, music education, but you also study anatomy, psychology, um, you have about 1,200 clinical hours while in training, and then you do an internship after you've gone through the school program, and then you sit for a board exam. So again, wow. it's much like all the medical professions. It's yeah. kind of a few steps, one yeah. after the other, but it's good because you want to ensure that the people out there practicing right. kind of know what they're doing. Well, we've got your contact information. We're going to put that up, Music Therapy Nashville. Yep. And it looks like musictherapynashville.org would actually get to your website. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we appreciate you being here. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. And I've learned something today. Yeah. I thought it was just listening <laughs> to music. It's so. a pleasure to talk I, about. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. All right. Sure thing. Up next, we're going to talk about different ways to approach people living with the Alzheimer's disease. We'll be right back.